It's a new day. Henry, can you hear me? Hallelujah. I thought you'd never wake. Were you having a nightmare? Uh, Teresa? Hmm. You still have a fever. Uncle won't be pleased, but you'll have to stay in bed. Where am I? In Scalitz? We're at my uncle's mill in Rattay. I didn't know where else to go. What happened? You don't remember anything? I suppose that's not surprising. I found you in Scalitz after those bandits attacked you. I thought they'd done for you. But you were still breathing. Why in heaven's name did you go back there? It was madness. They slaughtered everyone who didn't run. My parents, I... I wanted to bury them. I had to... Don't worry. I took care of it. Thank you. Any good Christian would have done the same. Now sleep. You need your strength back. You're awake. Good morning. <laughs> it's near midnight. You've slept all day. Oh. <laughs> oh, I feel like a horse fell on me. The beating you took was worse. But at least the fever's broken. What in the world were you doing in Scalitz? Waiting to die. What? They killed my brothers, my family, my friends. They're all dead? All of them. Everyone I ever loved. They killed one of my brothers in the mines. After that, what did I have to live for? Don't say that. There's always hope. No, there isn't. But it doesn't matter. I'm a different person now. How did you manage to save me? You were lucky. I was in Scalitz and I saw Zbyszek and his thugs. I tried to distract them, but it would have been no use if those soldiers from Tamburg hadn't arrived. They were searching for you and scattered the bandits. Searching for me? Yes. Lord Divish sent them, led by Captain Robard. So tell me, why is a lord of such high standing interested in a blacksmith? So Divish promised Saratik he'd look after me. But as for why they should care, I've no idea. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm not surprised. I'll bring you water and something to eat. In the meantime, rest. You're still very weak. Good morning to you. How's the invalid today? I oh, haven't felt as good as this since they lashed me to the wheel and quartered me on the town square. Got your sense of humour back. You must be better. My uncle will be glad to hear it. I had a job persuading him to let me bring you here. If you'd lain around much longer, he really would have dumped you on the town square. You can stay until you find somewhere else to live, but my uncle will want payment for taking you in and caring for you. And this is your uncle's house? We're in Rattay Mill, my uncle's miller Peshek. He took me in, and I talked him into taking care of you too. I've been lying here long enough. Uncle will be pleased he's one mouth less to feed. But are you truly well enough? Well enough to do what has to be done. Where can I find Sir Radzig? He's in the lower castle in Perkstein. He's a guest of Sir Hannes of Leiper. But someone like you can't just walk up bold as you please and demand an audience. I know, Sir Adzik, And I didn't bring him his sword as I was supposed to. I must see him. If you insist. But you need to speak to my uncle first. You've been in your sickbed for over a fortnight while he paid the apothecary to tend to you. And for medicine. That's a good deal of a coin you owe him. I've been lying here two weeks. My God. Better a fortnight in bed than an eternity in the grave. If it weren't for my uncle, you wouldn't be here at all. I owe you both my life. And I'll repay my debt. You have my word. 
All right. But before you go to town, you should eat something. You're still weak. There's food on the table for you. Have you eaten yet? Yes, it was very good. Did you bake it yourself? I did. I'm glad you enjoyed it. What actually happened to you in Scalis? I mean, during the attack and... Well, you know. That's a long story. Not a very cheerful one. Are you sure you want to hear it now? I do. All right, then. It was a day like any other. Another ordinary day in my ordinary life. woke at first light, before the others. I like those kind of mornings best. When the first rays of sunshine quickly drive away the nighttime cold. Hello, you. Come here. And the breeze carries the scent of dew-covered grass and the bloom of spring. I wanted to get my chores done before the rest of the household was up. And this morning seemed made for that very purpose. Right, better get to work. I have to feed the hens, weed the garden, feed Tinker. I'd better get it all done before Papa is up.
Let's see what you can sniff out here. Seek. There's no point in waking anyone before I've got my chores done. I must bring Tinker a piece of meat. That'll be a nice treat. There's no point in waking any- He'll be grumpy if I wake him. I'd better let him sleep. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. There's a good doggy. That's my boy. Come along. That should do it. The garden is looking how it should again. Here, chicky, chicky, chicky. Here. Here you are, girls. Fill your beaks. Look what I've got, your love. Look, you. Oh, 
up, Samuel. I don't want to hear you're the last one at the mine again. Teresa! Come, Teresa, come here. What do you need, Papa? Go up and see the blacksmith. He made some nails for me. Here's some coin. All right. Anything else? Well, no, unless you want to stop off at the market and buy some supplies. And before you go, wake Samuel. The boy's still lying in bed and won't stir. He ought to follow your example and Stebor's. You two don't have to be pushed to work. Well, at least he's still better than that good-for-nothing's Bishek. The lazy wretch. A helper like that isn't worth a damn. If it weren't for his father, God rest his soul, I'd have thrown him out on his ear long ago. Aye, he's an idler, that one. And he'd hop. God will re- You could tell him to get his ass to work, too. Right. Go for nails, send Samuel and Zabishek to work. If it's at all possible. Aye, just so. Oh, and Teresa, once you've done all your chores for the day, I've a little surprise for you. A surprise, Pa? Don't you want to tell me about it now? Curiosity killed the cat. What kind of surprise would it be if I told you, girl? Oh, all right. How are you, Teresa? No sign of the blacksmith. Where can he be? God's blessings. Father sent me to pick up nails, but there's no one at the fort. Aye, uh, sorry lass. Martin had to go to the castle to talk to Sir Radzig. He's to forge a sword for his lordship. Oh, I see. And has he made the nails for Pa? I'm afraid he hasn't had time on account of that sword. But if you come tomorrow, he'll surely have them for you. I'll remind him this evening. All right, I'll stop by tomorrow. Do that, dear. Oh, and by the way, the girls were looking for you. Which girls? 
Bianca and Johanka. You should stop by and see them before you go home. You girls must be plotting something. What was it about? They didn't say, but it seemed important. Which probably means boys, I suppose, hey? There's no harm in that, is there, good wife? You were young yourself once and went dancing with boys. Oh, so I'm an old woman now, am I? Uh, no, I didn't mean it like that. I'm only teasing you, girl. Dancing is just what you young ones should be doing. Make the most of it while you can. Before you know it, your pa will find you a husband, and you'll have a pack of children to take care of. <laughs> Let's hope it's not too soon. Thanks for letting me know. I'll stop by t Not at all. Oh, and another thing, Teresa. Have you seen Henry around anywhere? If he helped his father out more at the forge, there'd be no shortage of nails. I haven't seen him at all. No doubt he's at that sword play with that so-called combat master again. If he could wield a hammer half as good as a wooden sword, there'd be no shortage of nails. To me. Get him. <laughs> oh dear, did that hurt? Is that all you've got? I'll let you go. So be it. Adam!
good day. I reckon we're in for a decent harvest. God be with you, Teresa. How may I be of service? God be with you. What can I do for you? Any news, Maruna? Well, there's a peculiar fellow standing by the potters on the outskirts, selling strange trinkets, relics and the like, and he's got a peculiar talk to go with it. Peculiar? In what way? Well, I went to see what he was selling and greeted him politely, and he started on about how I'm a pretty girl and what have you. What's so strange about that? Fellas are always talking to girls that way if they don't wear a wife's scarf. Ah, but that's not all. He started on about how we're different from one another, men and women like, and in a vulgar way too. I'd rather not say anything on the subject. Take care of yourself, Maruna. What is your wish? Can we do something about the price? Naturally. This here, and a little top up. Thanks a thousand times. Trying to flog me stolen goods, eh? I see what you're up to. You won't get much from me for that. Let's agree on the price then. God save you, sir. I'm finished. This is going nowhere. <laughs> Trying to flog me? Let's agree on the price. Satisfied? A nice sum. Just lower your demands a little and... I knew we'd come to an... Look out!
Bianca, how come you're up so bright and early? Papa has me running around from dawn till dusk. You know how it is. Indeed I do. I'm glad you're here, Tess. You've got to help me with something. But first, can you go and see Henry for me? He's at the sheepfold by the stockade, as usual. Oh, playing around with wooden swords again? Aye, he's getting ready for the life of a mighty warrior. Well, at least we know he'll be able to protect you from outlaws with wooden swords. <laughs> oh well, boys and their games. Listen, would you bring him a beer from me? But why don't you bring it yourself? If Pa saw me running after Henry, he'd tend my hide. But I can't leave him dry in this heat. All right, I'll bring the beer to him. Thanks. And don't forget to tell him it's from me. Everyone knows all the beer in Scallops is from you and your pa. <laughs> you know what I mean. And listen, Tess. Once you've given him the beer, come back to me again. Meanwhile, I'll make an excuse to pa. I need you to go somewhere with me. But I'll tell you all about it after. Run along before the beer gets warm. God be with you, Henry. I brought you a beer. I'd say you'd need it after a hard battle. Ah, great. It's as hot as Pa's forge out here today. That's very sweet of you to get me a beer. Well, I saw you hopping around here in this heat, and I figured you'd work up quite a thirst. Ah, you're right there. Thanks. That's very kind of you. I'll, uh... I'll have to pay you back somehow. I'll look forward to it. How come you're training on your own today? You're usually here with that vagabond. What's his name? Vanyek. And he's not a vagabond. He's a wayfaring combat master. Well, it looks like he's off wayfaring somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> More likely sleeping off last night's boozing. Actually, wouldn't you like to have a go? I mean, a bit of swordplay. I could teach you. N sure. Why not? All right, then. I accept your challenge, young sir. But I must warn you, I can swat a mouse with a broom with my eyes closed. Yeah, I knew you had the heart of a warrior. Let's go, then. Come on, then. Show me what you're made of. Whoever is the first to hit the other ten times is the victor. What if I hurt you, though? Ah, don't worry. I can handle it.
Don't go easy on me, Harold. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, really? Now that is hardly chivalrous behavior. Now, I shall have to fight for my honor. Take that, you scoundrel! Oh. Are you all right? It's nothing, I'm fine. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Are you mad at me? No, of course not. It's my own stupid fault. Well, that'll teach you to go around slapping decent, God-fearing girls on the backside. <laughs> Let me have a look at it. No, no, it's only a scratch and a couple of splinters. And I didn't mean to, you know. Show me that. No, really, it's nothing. You know how it is, Hal. He who lives by the sword. Dies by the splinter, eh? <laughs> <laughs> There now. <laughs> By the way, you owe Bianca for that beer. I'm just training with a wooden sword for now, but one day, I'll forge myself a real weapon. <laughs> Teresa, I'm glad to see you. Greetings, Tess. You want something from Yo Honka, what's up? I was asking around for you. There's something we have to talk about. Are you going to the dance this evening? I'd like to go and have a look, if I have time for it. Why? Do you want to borrow my dress? No, no. Nothing like that. I've got a dress, but... I don't want to end up dancing on my own. If you know what I mean. <laughs> what? You want me to dance with you? <laughs> Imagine what folk would make of that. No, silly. I want Matthias to dance with me. So, what's the problem? Just go and tell him. You've had your eye on him since the Harvest Festival. Surely you must have noticed by now. He hasn't. 
I'm at a loss what to do. So you'd like Matthias to take you to the dance, but you don't want to tell him? That's right. How in heaven's name do you want to do it then? Easy. You're going to steal his lucky dice. What? How is that supposed to help, for Christ's sake? If you can get your hands on it without him noticing, he'll be looking everywhere for it. He'll be wandering around saying to himself, Where did I put that damned dice? And then... I'll turn up. God be with you, Matthias. You didn't by any chance lose your dice. And he'll say... Aye, Johanka, I did. Where on earth did you find it? Oh, I found it near the tavern. You know there's going to be a dance there this evening. And then he'll finally get the message. Oh, the dance. Yes. Johanka, wouldn't you like to go with me? Of course. I'd love to go with you, Matthias. Thank you for asking. Then he'll take me by the hand and he'll look... <clears throat> Never mind that. Um... Well, that's how it's going to help, more or less. You can't be serious. That will never work. It will. Please, Tess. He loves that dice of his. He'll be overjoyed when I give it back to him. Why don't you just steal the dice yourself? And if he caught me doing it? You think he'd go dancing with me then? Except maybe to the bailiff. But you... Well, you're a miller's daughter and... Well, you know what they say. Right. We're all a pack of thieves. I might have known. Sorry, Johanka, but there's no way I'm going to steal from Matthias just because you're too shy to talk to him. But, Tess, how else can I... No, I won't do it. Sorry. What have we here? Good. What the? Are you looking for something? You and your ill. What are you two quarrelling about here, for the love of God? This pipsqueak here claims studying is as hard a job as working in the stables. I most certainly did not, because study is of course much harder work than mucking out a bit of horse manure. See? That's what I'm talking about, and yet it's as clear as day. Hang on, what's as clear as day? That study is as hard as mucking out stables, if not harder. A man who doesn't work with his hands is an idler, and a good-for-nothing. Am I wrong? I'd like to ask you a couple of questions before answering. You serve Sir Radzik at the castle, don't you, Master Groom? Aye, and Sir Radzik is very pleased with my work. I can be rightly proud of what I do, and I bring home a nice wage too. The children are fed, and the wife can buy herself a nice scarf from time to time. I'm satisfied with my lot. How many people can say that? 
You're a scholar. What are you doing in Scalitz? I'm on my way to Sassau with letters. This ingrate here is stabling my horse overnight before I continue my journey. What's so hard about your job, Master Groom? That's real work. Not like this parasite here does. On my feet from dawn till dusk, feeding, mucking out, grooming. By evening, I'm dead on my feet. I'm doing something real, see? Something that makes sense. Horses are needed for work, for the lords, for riding out, even in times of war. And someone has to care for those horses. All this good-for-nothing can do is mouth off. But he'd never be able to do a real job. That's all I need to know. You're both right, but not one of you has a grain of sense. Work is work, whether it's done with your hands or your heart. Ah, rhetoric worthy of Socrates himself, and out of the mouth of a woman. I bow to you, good maiden. The professors of Prague could learn a thing or two from you. Are you saying this good-for-nothing here who has to beg for his beer at the tavern is my equal? But to hell with it. I won't argue. Come here, quick! Alarm! Damn it! Alarm! Shoot! Ow! To heal, Tinker. I don't believe it. He's run off again. He was the one that pulled it up. It's our job to ask everyone who lives nearby if they saw anything suspicious. Then good luck with that. Because in case you haven't noticed, everyone around here lives near the mines. Aye, but some live closer than others. And Don't move! Surrender! Finger. You committed a violation. You're under arrest. <laughs> Is that the best you can do? I'll find you, Kurt. You can't hide from me. again. <laughs> Is that the best you can do? You...
God save your test. Beyond the pain, but well, but not he. God be with you, Henry. I brought you a bit. Well, uh, uh, what? Vanny. Well, actually, I mean, sure. You, uh, uh, I've. Yeah. Come on then, show me what you're made of. Whoever is the first to hit the other ten times is the victor. What if I hurt you though? Ah, uh, don't worry, I can handle it. Don't go easy on me. Teresa, I'm glad to see you. I, why? If you I'm up, I'm if you thought you pay for I'm no. as a rake from never having a decent meal. What are you two? This pipsqueak. That's... Your... Are you saying... Stealing the king's silver is a capital crime. You get the pie for that. Why do you keep going on about it? What's it got to do with me?
Well, we did. He was the one that brought it up. It's our job to ask everyone who lives nearby if they saw anything suspicious. Then good luck with that. Because in case you haven't noticed, everyone around here lives near the mines. Aye, but some live closer than others. And then there's also the fact that... How to put it? We're asking you because... Well, you're a miller, right? Oh, I see. Since I'm a miller, I must be a crook. Is that it? No, but you know what they say. Aye. They say you lot can hardly find your own asses. Never mind a thief. You're keeping me from my work, young fellas. So if we're done here, farewell and good luck. All right, Miller. If you should happen to hear anything, let us know. I went for those nails, but the blacksmith is with Sir Radzik. All right, leave it till tomorrow then. No hurry. Right now, I need something else. What's up? The guards were here asking around. They said someone's been stealing silver from the mines. Can you go and tell Stebor? He went to check the fish trap below the bridge. Why? What has Stebor got to do with stolen silver? Uh, uh, look, just talk to him about it, all right? But I'm asking you, Father. Don't tell me you don't trust your own daughter. For heaven's sake, Teresa. I said talk to Stebor about it. Ugh. sent me. The guards were here, asking about Silver going missing from the mines. Oh shit. Oh shit. All right. All right. Listen, Tess. I need your help. Not so fast. First, tell me what the hell is going on. All right. Look. How can I put it? Spit it out. Otherwise, you're on your own. All right. Pa came up with a nice little job. It's quite easy to sneak silver ore out of the mines, and he found this wealthy fella who offered to buy it. So, well, it does lead back to us. The missing silver is ours. Merciful God! I need your help, Teresa. Stealing from the mines? Stebor, that's really dangerous. Have you and Park on mad? It's no wonder there's so much talk of thieving millers. It's all true. Please, Tess, this is really important, and I can't manage it alone. If the guards find that sack, it could turn really ugly. Where did you hide it? That's the thing. It's at the bottom of a flooded shaft. Samuel was working there before. You dragged Samuel into it too? No, no. Samuel knows nothing about it. So why don't you just go and get it? I don't know how to get to it. For heaven's sake, Stebor. Do you know where it is or not? Yes, but, you see, when I was carrying it out, they stopped me. I was standing on this wooden walkway and I dropped it over the edge so they wouldn't catch me with it. And now I don't know how to get to it. All I know is it made a splash when it fell. And how are we supposed to find it? Go crawling through the whole mine? No, I've got an idea. Samuel knows that area. He he'll know how to get to the shaft. Oh no, Stebor, forget it. You're not going to drag Samuel into your dangerous games. Christ, no. What do you take me for? All he has to do is draw a map, and we'll do the rest. Stebor, we don't have to get Samuel involved. Let's just find it without a map. Without a map, we just end up getting lost in the dark. Come on, you don't have to tell Samuel what it's for. So we'll get lost in the dark then. Samuel has nothing to do with this, and it's going to stay that way. We'll go without the map. We'll have it your way then. But mark my words, this will end badly.
day turns out. Huh? You! What the hell are you fooling around here for? Get him! You off right now or I'll fucking see you off! How do we do it? That fool Nimoy is keeping watch. It'd be best if we split up. I'll get rid of him and you can sneak in. I want to ask you something. Why do I have to go inside? Why don't you do it? Well, remember when we used to play hide-and-seek? Yeah. You could never find me. And you always found me immediately, because I was useless at hiding. Yeah. You always had something sticking out. Exactly. You're right. Best if I do it. For sure. There won't be many people inside now. Most of the lads will be outside eating. But even so, watch out. Tell me again where I can find that sack. It's somewhere in that flooded shaft. It's a good thing I was on that walkway when they stopped me, otherwise I'd have had nowhere to drop it. Only now, you have to get down there. Who caught you? And how did you get out of it? The miners, of course. I told them I was looking for Samuel, but I still got a hard time from the guards for being there at all. That's all. All right. Let's get it over with, then. Once I get rid of him, you sneak inside past the bushes. And take a torch with you. It's black as pitch in there. Just make sure no one sees you, though. Good luck, Tess. Bring it on! You call that combat? What's the...
When you take one for a whirl, you can have a good feel of what she's got under her dress. <laughs> Let's see what you can seek. Hey, who's that? Ah. 
What's that noise? Right!
the hell was that? Ah! Watch out! <clears throat> yeah, dead. My, that's a hell of a drop. 
Better be careful. Cold. But this must be the place Stebor was talking about. Now to find that wooden walkway. I wouldn't want to get lost in here. The walkway. The sack must be here somewhere.
There's a good doggy. Mm. That's my boy. Let's see. see. Greetings. Holba. Work is work. Don't tell me. Again? You can help with- I could. True. You saw- What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Oh, I. You need to watch your back with us, Millers. What? <laughs> I'm only yanking your fizzle, Holba. You mustn't- No, you're right. We were at the mine, but there was no way to get the... Nemoy is watching, and there are guards nearby. It can't be done. Damn it. That's all we need. There was a nice pile of ore there, and I'm supposed to meet our buyer tomorrow. Oh, well, there's nothing to be done. Let's hope no one finds that sack. Or if they do, they don't connect it with Stebor being there. I shouldn't have dragged you two into it.
What about that surprise you promised me this morning? All right, fair enough. It's not the best time, what with the trouble we have now, but life goes on. I had a dress made for you in Rate. A very fine dress indeed. You'll be the prettiest lass in the village. A new dress, Pa. But I don't understand. Why? Well, you know, you're not a little girl anymore. You're a young woman now, mature and clever. Cleverer than me, for sure. You surely don't want to live here at the mill forever. Samuel's able to take care of himself, and after all that's happened, you don't want to end up with the kind of life me and Steebel have. What is it, Paul? Why did you buy me that dress? Look, Teresa, you're old enough to be married. It's about time we did something about it. You're right, I suppose. But I don't have any suitors. Actually, you do. I know of someone. You... you found a husband for me? Who is it? Don't worry. He's a decent man. A nice man. He's even close to the nobility. And he's rich. He'll take care of you. There's going to be a fete at the tavern this evening. Sir Radzi gave permission for a pig roast, and... Who is it? You can just have a chat, dance a little, and who knows? You might like him. Are you going to tell me who it is? It's Chief Engineer Tobias. Tobias Fafer? Aye, that's right. Are you pulling my... What are you thinking of, Father? Fafer has one foot in the grave. Oh, come now. Why didn't you ask me? You couldn't simply let me know what you were planning? Uh, Teresa, uh, listen. It's all, Teresa do this, Teresa go and cook, Teresa clean up. And now, for good measure, Teresa go and marry an old fossil. Does nobody care what I want? Well, of course we care. And you're right, I should have told you. You're damned right you should. Good God, I never thought you'd make such a fuss about it. It's the way things are done. Try and see it from my point of view. Tobias Fafer is a very well-to-do suitor. You'll find none better in Scullitz. Listen, we can talk it over, but the decision is mine to make. You've got to think of your future, Teresa. Master Fafer is a respected man, and that respect will extend to his wife and children too. Children? For heaven's sake, lass, don't be so naive. You were born a girl, and raising a family is what God made you for. Unless you'd prefer the convent. Go to the tavern this evening and let Master Fafer spend a nice pile of groschen on you. You'll have a great time, you'll see. <laughs> Show me that dress, then. It's in the trunk here under the window. Once you've done all your chores, get dressed up and off you go. All right, Teresa. But... All right, Teresa. Well, there's no...